through the string and bring the finger back and mute it in time. So just try that. Don't pull. Don't try to make a loud sound. Don't pull. Just strike through and rest in time. One and. And what you want to do is examine. You want to examine how you contact the string. With that, now when you go to the D string, it's going to be a little different because the angle is going to be different. Okay, but the other thing is, think about letting your fingers extend and relax. No, all of them. Yeah. In other words, the, the other when you do this, that's tension. It takes like a, let me just say, if you're going to shake hands with somebody and you put your hand out, what does it look like? It looks like that. It doesn't look like this. So I'm using I'm using only natural state uh, as a basis to do anything on the bass. With the bow arm, the natural state of your arm is not this, and it's not this. It's this. So, you know, that's basically what the arm looks like when you're bowing. Not like this, not like this. Right? So the same thing with the, Think about, like, natural state of your hand sending energy through it, rather than tensing it up in some kind of artificial way and trying to send energy through it. Okay? So then you go, let's go to the D string now and try that. And make sure that you actually bring the finger out in time and mute it. Just lay it on there. You don't, you don't pull, you strike it through like a bell. Okay? That's it. And you might hear like a little overtone of resting your finger on there. The bell is helpful. Yeah. Okay, then go to the A string. Now notice as you go over, things change in terms of where you contact the string. Uh, don't pull out, don't pull anything, don't let your thumb free, stay, stay. as soon as you're through the string, it's over. Then it's just, it, you're resting on the adjacent string. There's no pressure, okay? So there's very little effort involved. Okay, now when you go to the E string, there's no rest string. So you can just strike through and rest on your, on your thumb. But as soon as you're through the string, you know, none done of this, working, you're done yeah, working. You're, not, you're done working, right. And the next thing is to get back, okay? So the other idea of this is that rather than this kind of business, which you can do at the end of the time, that's fine. And the last note you can, you know, and take a Be bow. dramatic, yeah. Right. But when you're playing, you need to get back. So, okay, now the next stage of this would be to repeat the note. Now this is really like striking a bell. The idea is we're sustaining the pitch. With a, with a reintroduction of a transient attack, but we're, we're trying to keep the sound going. So we're not going to mute it, we're going to just restrike it like if you're hitting a bell. Just let it, let it try to get this again. The, the thing is, you're, you're in the habit of doing that, so you, when you think about it, if you can just try to relax them and, and, and use less energy and just really. Yeah, more and more of the finger. It's, it's natural. This is again just the physiology, right? Yeah. So we're down here. I mean, you'll see the callus I have is above the, the knuckle. Uh huh. I mean, actually, that's that's from doing this actually. But I'm actually playing on the second knuckle for the Easter. Yeah. Oftentimes. Okay. Yeah. With this that makes one sense. Finger. This is just the one finger approach, first of all. Okay. So you repeat on the E. I always recommend doing a little extra time on the E, so you get that controlled better. That's good. That's good. What does it feel like? It feels good. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need the callus. Well, you haven't got that yet. So, yeah. now, and in terms of your finger, don't try not to straighten your index finger so much. Just let it be, and it's yeah. That's good. That's good. And you can experiment with with you know at what angle so you try different where angles. Is, um, hmm? Where is sort of the pulling coming? Uh, no pulling. From? There's I mean, no pulling. The, are you sort That's of, the wrong word. It's, it's, we don't pull. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, is the energy yeah. coming from your knuckle? Or well, your the energy is coming from my legs, yeah. my large muscle groups. I'm really aware of that. 
I, I, it's about how you stand. It's about shifting your weight periodically, not getting stuck in one hip. Yeah, you know? it's what Sevilla was saying this morning about that whole sort of. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's Wait, it's Alexander technique yeah. for base. Yeah. I mean, it's that's why I wanted to talk about pizzicato because I've been you know sort of very or trying to be methodical about yeah. the art yeah. of technique. But well, translated uh, pizzicato, it just seems like well, you just well, no, it's just no. <laughs> okay, I got a whole bunch of exercises. <laughs> so then, um, you know, so you can work on that and work slowly and really be aware of the sound you're making and think about the sound you want to make. You know, like, or, or just play with it and accept whatever comes and notice the change in the sound. And later on, and you know, you can think about how it feels. Like, like for example, you, maybe you'll notice a lot of transient attack noise. you're hitting a note up here, mm -hmm. wherever you're right. playing, you're going to hit a note. So, the main thing is not to try to make a huge sound. A huge sound actually comes from in here, you know, when you get out of the way. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do is avoid adding extra tension in the arms. Now, you've probably been in situations where you've had to play fast for a long time, and the shoulders start to come up, they start to burn your hand, and it's like, yeah, we all know what that feels like. And that's when you really learn to breathe again, drop your shoulders, and play whole notes. If you're doing a jam session gig and the seventh tenor players come up, you don't have to play all those chord notes. It's not in the job description. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Tenor Player, we're going to two beat. Sorry, Mr. Tenor Player, we're going to ballad to <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Tenor Player, you're playing a duo with the drummer. You know, whatever. I'm just saying, that old paradigm Especially when somebody's being indulgent and it's this like you know, machismo thing, that's when you need to like check out. Get yourself together, do a little stretch, relax. And if they don't like that, then you shouldn't be there. Or they shouldn't be there. Something. You know, without being judgmental. Yes. Okay, now the next thing would be this nice little crossing string exercise where you use one string as a pivot string. So let's say the G string. to making the sound. What you do with that later, and when you start adding more effort and doing different things and playing with your thumb or whatever, that's fine. But this is to get down to the, the nitty-gritty and the most basic way to produce the sound. And then you could add energy, you could add expression, etc. But find out where it begins. How you, the, the proto moment of sound production is very important. And when you discover that, and, and then start altering that, and also just you know sort of getting the energy flowing better, the sound gets much bigger and better, and you get more endurance. You know, you can play quicker. You don't have to. Oftentimes, if you think you can't hear yourself, you're going to play harder. You're going to get tighter. You're going to wear out. I mean, last night it was a challenge for me because I had only the microphone going, and I couldn't hear the bass that well. So I had to have that. I had to do that like faith healing thing where I just imagined the bass sound was going and just relax. Otherwise, you know, I would just beat myself to death. You know. Okay. So then, and then say the D string is our is our next pivot string. So D G and then. Thank you. 
<laughs> it's hard to do follow through on the E. Well, don't, don't yeah, mind. don't just don't go right into your thumb. Okay, just use your thumb as a string. That's it. Good. So the, what you want to do is you want to think about the relative dimension of the strings and the consequent relative dimension of the sound in relation to one another. So if you find one string sort of jumps out, you have to even things out. You might be, in, in other words, the A or the D might be particularly responsive, or also you may be more comfortable on that. And maybe the E might be a little quieter in the beginning, so you want to try to work on getting them to sort of respond in the perfect relationship that they should. My sound post needs to be adjusted, so my E string is a little looser than the other three. Mm. Is there some kind of suggestion until I get it adjusted? Well, your bridge is not in the right place. One, the E string is the E string foot is a bit lower. We can take a ruler and just tighten that up later if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, okay, so let, now, now the, the idea of this is to stay low. Oh, let me hear you. Yeah, please. Sorry. See, you also have this really short fingerboard, which means to get down here, you have like a 30-inch fingerboard. Man. I'm going to get an extension on that thing. I'm serious. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, look where his is. This, this one's pretty short. It's, 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 like it's a, a little short. That's a B. Yeah, mine goes up to uh, D. Who's going to play up there on this bass? Hmm? Well, yours is here? I suppose I would if it was there, but... Yeah, so it's like an inch and a half longer than that. So why is that a problem? Well, it, it, it allows you, this allows you to, to keep your ah. thumb anchor lower and get a bit more projection. But listen. Yeah, no, now, no, no, once she's at the thumb, I totally get it now. Now, Mingus used to play down here. So just to get some, like, really extra aggression on the sound, which is fantastic. So has, they just glue something on here, is that what Yeah, happens? I put extensions on there. You just cut a piece and put some metal dowels. And I have a good guy who can do that. Yeah. So let me just hear you play from uh, with the crossing. Well, maybe why don't you put your thumb more up here so you're playing sort of into the board with you. Yeah, try that. Now try, not so hard. It seems it feels it feels like you're pulling. Do it a little slower, a little more delicately. Just try to make an even sound. Yeah. See now what you're doing is you're playing on the rosin because the yeah. you know because you so so you might want to maybe pits up on the board a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So check out the difference in the quality of sound. So E A E D E G E D. It goes a little slower. But don't, yeah, okay, now watch, watch when I do it. I'm just, I'm not pulling. It looks like there's some string displacement, but it's, I'm trying to make it as even as possible, rhythmically and otherwise. kind of flicking out yeah. like quickly go slow really slowly like that's it and you see what you're doing now is you're doing you're doing I'm a reaching. you're doing a macro motion which is great in other words the speed of your motion is exactly in rhythm with the speed of the articulation so the movement is like it's like a dance right now yeah. if I play it faster So the rhythm that you're playing with the movement is wrong for the time that you're trying to express. So you need to relax and make it into circular movements. Bum, 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 bum. Just, yeah, it's got to bounce. That makes the quarter note bounce. That makes the shit swing. Really, it's the truth. I would never lie to you. <laughs> okay, now. Um, thing we could look at would be, um, well, there's a sort of two-finger thing, which gets a little more complicated, but if you want to do some good pizzicato work, um, what I did was I took all these little storm etudes, S-T-U-R-M, 
these little classical etudes, oh, yeah, I know that. and play them pizzicato with single finger. Okay, there's also this delay number one from the 18 studies, which goes like this. It's really all 16th notes. It's like, so it's a, it's a, you know what interval training is in sports? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. well that's what we do for pizzicato, to develop um, endurance. So let's, this belay exercise goes like this. It goes. Now, in the beginning, you probably won't be able to get through the whole thing in one shot. So you stop. You rest, just like an in interval training in sports and track. You run a sprint. You walk half the length of the sprint or jog half the length of the sprint. Then you sprint. Okay, do a hundred of those. Uh, <laughs> so that's the way you build it up. That's how I'm doing a half marathon. There you go. Yeah. I used to be a long distance runner. I used to yeah. really, I was a mile and two mile. So I was yeah, like, I'm doing two mile. I used to run about 60 miles a week and used to do. I'm not that dedicated. Just insane amount of speed work. I mean, mm -hmm. and all under the clock. Yeah, uh, too too intense for run me. Run a six mile, ra you know, run and okay, we want a 518 mile on this one. Right? No, okay. no, 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 no. I just want to have fun. That was like 15, yeah, man. I could yeah. run like a deer. You know? <laughs> I'm just doing it to have fun. I hear you and feel good. So you can take any of those etudes. Some of them are like arpeggiated. The Sturm ones are really particularly good because the first one I think starts out like a, yeah. You know, just octave thing, mm -hmm. which is really great. So you can do this with single finger. It's really what it is is a control so that you can, you know, if you memorize a couple of these things, you can really observe what you're oh, doing sure, technically, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, and see if you're, if you're playing but evenly. I'll, Play them musically as well. I'll be right there. You know, play them like as solo pieces, mm -hmm. pizzicato as opposed to playing a marco. You know, using the classical literature, yeah, right pizzicato, there. can be very useful. You know, if you've come from a classical tradition, you just translate that expression, expressiveness to the pitch thing, instead of just trying to like stomp out a bunch of pitch sounds. You know, you're actually making music that way. You know? So you're, you're coloring the melody with how you play pits. You know? I mean, if you played something like... sound using a thumb, you know, and also if I play the two finger thing straight across, it's got a little more point on it and you can articulate 16th notes a little better. So the two finger approach, you do basically the same thing up here, except you're muting with it, with the alternate finger. Just try that. And don't pull. No, no, it's, it's just, put your, you can put your thumb up like this. It, it might be a little uncomfortable. But, see, that's it. Again, in time. that it's passive until the time that you make the sound. Then you go through the string. It's really re truly resting. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very important. This is the whole point of this stuff. If, if you don't observe those details, it's useless to even mess with this. Hmm. It's really, that's where the gain is. Because what you're doing is you're, you're examining your pizzicato production of sound and articulation for the first time, really, like in a disciplined fashion. Yes. And so it's up to you to just observe that and notice what works. You know, now it's, it's some of this stuff might feel uncomfortable physically, um, and as you know, 
lots of things that have been uncomfortable on the base until they weren't. So if you hang with them, you yeah, know, my fingers don't hurt anymore. For example, <laughs> you know, uh, and if you hang with that stuff for a while, the thing that used to be uncomfortable becomes very normal, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's go like to the um, let's go to the E string directly. Okay, so. Now here, that's it, that's good. What you're doing, just right, just keep the finger available. So let's go to the repeated note right away, right, but not too fast, like. So you can work on that as well, okay? Now the next stage would be this crossing thing. I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. But it's always alternate, always alternate. You, you, one, two, one, two, one, two, or two, one, two, one, two, one. Yeah, it's oh, hard right. to alternate. Yeah, hello. So, slow down, yeah. right? So I'm starting with two, let's say. slowly and deliberately and economically and and then as you increase you know the tempo uh, always bring it back and then bring it back up when it's when you hit the wall I recommend going faster than than where you hit the wall and then come back to where you hit the wall hmm. if you know what I mean like if you can't articulate it at this fast then go faster and really fumble it up and then come back to the tempo where you fumbled first and it'll probably be better and then go back to the slow stuff, you know. So that sort of process of going back, yeah, yeah, is it yeah, jumping right yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to. Is get that true with Arco too? Yeah, do, yeah. Same thing with it. Doing, you know, for from velocity. Uh, I had a lot of, you know, we used to do a lot of scale practice with, with articulations and different bowings, and working it up to pretty ridiculous velocities. <laughs> Where what happens then is the movements become what I call macro movements rather than discrete movements. Like in other words, uh, here, let me use your bow for a second. Like if you're doing the, the sort of crossing string, like uh, spiccato, for example, like you say. You know, as I get faster and faster, if I like double them up, it's like. You know, if I do this like, there's my bow. I must have put it away, it's okay. Like if you do it like this. That's like discrete movements. But as you increase the tempo, you now it becomes sort of one flowing movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely inside there's, of, inside there's a kind of, which, of yeah. curvy right. shape to it. And inside of it is, is all this articulation going on. So that's so the same thing with the, with the pizzicato playing. You have to do it sort of discrete, sort of thoughtful movements, and then eventually they start to blend together into more what I call macro movements that are connected. You know, they're sort of interconnected and, and sort of one movement with these little details in, in, inside of it. Uh, let me see some other stuff that. Um, Look at uh, yeah. last night. It looked like you were playing a line like on the board. Like maybe oh, that's just. Are we hammering on the board? No, no. I mean that too, but just from this, like playing fast pizzicato to like. I guess it's a product of doing sort of a rest stroke through the string, mm -hmm. but it really looked like. You know, like on the. Like I was like on the wood. On the wood. Oh, really? Did it sound like that too? Two fingers and the sort of 
parallel style as well as that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can work on that too, like. You know, do any of those notey sort of 16th note exercises as a calisthenic, actually, in order to get the, the sort of motoric aspect of that one, two, one, two, one, two, really, really exact. The other thing is you take those etudes and you play them one, two, one, two, one, two, or two, one, two, one, two, one. You don't vary the fingers, you don't rake across, you actually play each note discreetly, every alternate finger, no matter how absurdly uncomfortable it is. And, you know, it's a way of sort of pushing yourself into the most awkward situations, physically, in order to sort of make them not so awkward, mm -hmm. so that when you're improvising, you paint yourself into a corner and you can figure a way out. Like, same with fingering, too. Like with fingering, you use a lot of alternative fingerings. And you know, you know the Raboth method of fingering at all? Yeah. Be careful of that, but, but it's, it's useful. It's best to learn both methods and use them when you need to. Because I find that the pivoting system can be very nice for a lot of situations. You know where I need to cover a lot of ground. Right. Plus he makes you like play all the way up the yeah. low strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean another great book is the Petrachi book. Uh, yeah. The Mingle A twos, which are playing wick all across the bass in, in very extreme registers with with lots of interesting fingering approaches. You know? Yeah, I'm just yeah, just doing that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that you just do the whole all the way up. Oh, but I wasn't talking. I'm talking about there's an etude book. Oh, there's an etude. Oh, yeah. this is this is not the. Yeah, no, that thing is a little boring, but it's got yeah. it's got all the, the information. So this is another book. This is actually these uh, etudes by this guy Anibal Mengele from from not the guy uh, you know, <laughs> in, in South America, but the other. Not, guy. Yeah, not yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, we always joke about that. <laughs> we call my we call my bass. I have a, I have a, a barbe. We call it Klaus and Barbie. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dark. I know. Mark Dresser and I have a whole thing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the, um, the Mengele uh, exercises, are, they're etudes, they're, they're quite complicated and, and they're all over the bass, a lot of upper register stuff, and Petrachi refingered them with these very interesting approaches. So it kind of gets you out of the normal semantal fingering and into you know, a lot of you know, the rotating the, the index finger behind a thumb and things like that, and putting your thumb in every possible position to, uh, you know, it, it kind of stretches you out. It's very good. Oh, let me think of uh, some other. Yeah, in, in those etudes, like um, like that one. That so, and if you're doing like arpeggios, you know, just do them with one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way, and see if you. But slowly at first. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're quite welcome. Very much. It's a lot of info. Yeah.